without failure, you have no success. Your failure can eventually become Lead your greatest 100%, success. 100%, yeah. yeah. The only failure is not to try. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. My one word is believe, and I believe in you. I believe you have Michael Jordan level talent at something, and I want you to find it, embrace it, and make a difference using it. Now, I started the One Rule series because I watch a lot of top tens. We make a lot of top 10 content for you, and some of the rules get repeated over and over and over and over again. And so the goal of this series is to smush together all of those similar rules into one video. So today, we're going to learn about how there is no success without failure. Enjoy. People are just afraid, man. So many people are afraid of rejection, of failure. But without failure, you have no success. What was the one that stung the most as far as failures? What stung the most, biggest failure, I had a TV show called The Big House, got picked up by ABC. They told me that we were going to do 12 episodes, flew me down to New York. Um, this is the biggest news ever. I'm about to be rich. Holy sh! I'm 22. Yeah. I got a TV show. I'm writing executive producing, starring in the show. You know what? No, I'm not just going to go down there by myself. We got to bring the cast. They said, nope, Kevin, we only flying you. I said, well, I'm going to pay for the cast to come. I took my own money, flew them all down to New York. Get to New York, put on my suit. People taking pictures of me walking out. This is the best thing ever. Holy sh! I'm famous. This is what it is. I get to the upfronts. Upfronts are where they announce your TV show. It's a slew of shows. They're announcing their time slots. I'm next. They're about to announce the big house. Somebody puts their hand on my chest and says, Kevin, wait. They talk in the earpiece. They said, nope, I'm standing with him right now. I'm like, what's going on? What do they want me to do? You know, they want me to go on the other side or something. And he goes, okay, I'll tell them. They canceled. They're not going to pick you up. Uh, you got to step back. And I was like, wait, that don't sound right. <laughs> Literally that fast, they sent me home. They were like, you got to just go home. TV show got picked up six months later for six episodes. The third episode's aired, they canceled the show again. I got the show canceled twice in a six-month period, which has never been done before. I booked about three more pilots, got canceled. There was a show called John Stamos' show. He was a publicist, and they wanted me as a series regular. The show was going great. Ratings were good. Put me on the show, show got canceled. <laughs> uh, 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 it was everything I touched on TV turned to sh I'm now just sitting out here doing nothing. I ain't had no money. Uh, borrowing money left and right. I decided to say, f*** it. I said, I'm just going to do stand-up comedy and focus on my craft. And I slaved the road for about five years doing the same circuit over and over again. I think if you don't fail, you're not doing it right, to be honest. I think you should be failing uh, often. But it's important. It, it teaches you it limits and, and shows you like the limits you need to, to pass. If nobody ever made mistakes. Life would be really boring. That's true. Yeah. If you only try to succeed, then you're limiting yourself not to fail, which your failure could eventually become Lead your greatest 100%. success. 100%. Yeah. yeah, never be afraid of not getting it right or failing or not getting the part or not getting the job. Like, it's just one more notch in your belt, but you're still going to wear it. That, it's a long piece of leather. Mm -hmm. There's tons of room for more notches. Nobody sees the, like, 17 plus years of work that I've done before today where you finally stumbled upon a video of mine. We try so hard in our lives to fit in. We try to fit into certain groups, certain frats, certain sororities, you know, among certain friends, yet the people we idolize are most are the ones that stand out. But when you're prepared, there is no fear. There is no fear of failure, okay? Because even if you've walked out of something and you feel like you failed at it, your preparation is so strong that you're gonna take that failure and turn it into the outcome you desire. And most people stop at failure, okay? We've all failed at things. I'm gonna continue to fail at stuff, right? It's the most powerful tool you can use, but it all depends on how you use it. You know, we talk about it in Relentless, okay? A scalpel, okay? In the hands of an individual, it can do unbelievable damage. In the hands of a professional, of a doctor, it saves lives. So it's the same thing with failure. It's how you use it. It's that drive inside of you, okay? It's what we talk about, the dark side. The dark side is filled with failure, 
but it's the fuel that burns you like something that's never burned inside you before. You're probably going to fail. Yeah. The stuff you do is probably going to suck. You're probably going to get in trouble. Yeah. You're probably not going to work. Are you okay with that? Because yeah. if you're not okay with that, well, then that's why you're having trouble getting your ideas out there. That's why you're having trouble integrating other people into the team. That's why you're having trouble doing X, Y, and Z. Because you aren't okay with it not working. So you're waiting for the thing that's sure to work. But the thing that's sure to work isn't going to happen. Yeah. And if it is, someone's going to do it instead of you. So all that's left are the things that are probably not going to work. Yeah. The thing is, when you were four, you told a joke that was funny. And when you were eight, you did a, a drawing that was interesting. Yeah. And when you were 14, you had a conversation with someone that was truly human. You're capable of it. That's not the question. Everyone who's watching this has written one intelligent sentence. Yeah. I've just written more than one. But <laughs> it's a matter of quantity, not ability. Yeah. So where does the quantity come from? The quantity comes from being willing to be wrong, being willing to be made fun of, being willing to be embarrassed, being willing to fail. It never gets easier. It never gets fun, yeah. ever. Okay, fine. And gravity also sucks. If we didn't have gravity, we could fly. Yeah. So there's <laughs> gravity. But we don't whine about gravity. We just acknowledge that there's gravity and we walk anyway. Yeah. Well, I think the same thing is true about the art that we make, the difference that we make. The, a customer comes in every day and the fifth day they come in and it looks like they've been crying. It is not your job to say to them, is everything okay, and give them a hug. But if you did that, what would happen? Right. Right? It might not work. They might get really angry with you. It's <laughs> yeah. none of your business. But it also might change their life. You could sign up for that or not. And that's what freedom looks like. And yeah. that's why freedom is so scary. Because yeah. freedom doesn't come with a dummy's book. And freedom doesn't come with a permit. And freedom doesn't come with an excuse. You have to own it. And it probably isn't going to work. You know, I've written 7,000 blog posts and half of them were below average. I just didn't know which ones were below average until after I wrote them. If you want to succeed, then you need to adjust how you see failure. Failure is going to happen. If you look at the most successful people in the world, we've studied them, they're in the book, they're all over the channel, they failed the most. The most successful person you look up to, they're like, wow, that person is so successful, I can't believe it. They have failed way more than you've even tried. Not everything works out. Most of the series that I put out on this channel don't work out. We test constantly and most of them never go anywhere. They just don't get enough traction. It was an experiment, we failed, we move on to the next one. We have failed more than most people even try and that's why we succeed. And that's a consistent habit around people who are winning. They win because they tried so many other things and a certain percentage make their way through. And most people are so afraid to fail that they don't even try. And that's the biggest failure of all. They're so afraid of it not working out, of it not being the big hit, that they just sit on their idea and then they watch somebody else make tons of money and have a huge impact from it. Get it out there. It may not be the biggest version of what you're trying to do, but start. Start small. Build momentum. See if you still even like this thing or not. See if you can get some people interested in it or not. And expect to fail. Failure is not the enemy. Failure is normal. Failure is welcomed. Right? You're going to learn from it. You're going to build on it. You're going to make it better. If you are not failing, if you're winning every time, think about it, like if you're winning every time, everything you touch wins, that means you're playing a tiny game. It means you're racing against three-year-olds. Great, congratulations, you won every single race because you're running against three-year-olds. If you wanna be the best, you wanna have an impact, you wanna make your business a success, you wanna make money, you wanna reach people, you're gonna have to race against people who are a little more skilled and talented. You're gonna have to risk losing. You're not gonna win every race, but the good news is you don't have to. You don't have to win every race to succeed. You just have to win one. You can run a hundred races, you just need to win one. And then they call you an overnight success. So often, you don't move forward because you're keeping such score from what didn't work in the past. You are holding yourself hostage to 1997, to 2005. You're holding yourself hostage uh, in love to that past relationship that didn't work. Or you're holding yourself in hostage in business to the money that you may have thought you wasted or the deal that went bad. And so one of the ways that I give myself permission for two, on two levels, permission to have lived a life that has some beautiful experiences and some really tangy lessons. I mean, they're spicy, they hurt, they're painful. When I give myself permission to have had that, I also give myself permission to keep leaping. 
Give myself permission to keep dreaming. Give myself permission to keep learning how to get it right. Learning how to love the unlovable, forgive what seems to be the unforgivable, to leap again. Even while I still have a bandage on my chin from the last time I fell, I still get to leap. So I wanna invite you, if you fall, fall. Catch your breath, put a bandage on it. Whether you fail financially, you fail physically with health and wellness, you fail spiritually, you fail emotionally, you failed in a relationship, okay. A part of flying is understanding what the distinction between flying and falling. And the only way you understand the distinction is that you experience full life. When you experience full life, it's like this. Life isn't just flat line, it's not just like this. You make your heights feel better because you understand this was a failure. And, and what I mean by a failure is this taught me a lesson, this stung, this every single failure has a lesson in it. To me, a failure is a lesson wrapped in, 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 in some sticky, icky paper that stung, that hurt. And so give yourself permission, give yourself permission to play big, to be nervous, to fall down, to sit down for a minute. Just don't take up real estate in the sitting down. Don't take up real estate in the analyzing. Don't take, take, don't take up real estate in the preparation. You've been getting prepared for a long time for something. Trust that you'll either fly if you leap right now or you'll fall if you leap right now. And if you fly, you'll understand what soaring feels like. And if you fall, you'll understand what getting up feels like. Either way, you're okay. That's how I play big with my knees knocking. That's how I play big, even when there's something in my, in my consciousness reminding me of the last time I did something like this and it didn't quite work out. And I still play big because I gave myself, I, I give myself, I constantly give myself permission to totally win and soar or totally fall and get up. And that way, there's nothing to truly be afraid of. Remember, this is a dialogue, not a monologue, which means we're in a dynamic conversation versus me just entertaining you. Perfectionism doesn't advance anything, ironically. Um, as a creative and as a designer, there's no wrong way to go about the future of your career. The only, the only failure is not to try, you know, and I think that designers, we all have like a, or creators or artists, we have a natural convention to sort of be maybe tormented or a little bit of like an inner struggle is, is the work living up to its fullest potential or is it, you know, is it as great as the work that you idolize from your, your design idols? But at the end of the day, it's your body of work and it's the, the amount of work and the refinement of that work that'll define who you are as a creative. Isaiah Berlin famously said, to understand is to perceive patterns. That's in essence what creativity is. Steve Jobs says creativity is just connecting things. But in order to see patterns, and rather in order to recombine existing patterns into new forms and new shapes, you need to be willing to blur the boundaries between your thoughts, right? To be an associational thinker, right? To freestyle, to ride a butterfly affecting thought. But again, most of the time we play it safe, right? We map out what we're gonna say. We pre-plan what we're gonna do. We make a list, we have a set of steps. We are prepared, we've pre-scripted our speech, right? We are responsible. We're not going into a situation blind. But again, once in a while, my friends, we need to be willing to make a mistake. We need to be willing to fail. It is only when we risk making a mistake that we might find ourselves improvising, inventing, innovating our way back to where we wanna get to. Do you understand what I'm saying? Think of this rant as a metaphor for the creative process, right? I have somewhat an idea of what I wanna say, right? It's related to creativity and it's related to cognitive disinhibition and being willing to make a mistake. Mistake. That's all I know. 
Then I start jamming about this, and what happens is I might lose myself in some chain of thought, right? I just kind of lose myself in the moment. The metaphor might like confound me, and before I know it, I don't even remember what I was saying, but somehow that's when the creativity kicks in. Because somehow I've got to bring it back. I've got to rope it in. I've got to remember where I'm going. I've got to summon coherence, right? <laughs> in the bardos between one statement and the other. And in doing so, and in risking screwing up the video and the take, it is in that risk that the courage, that the innovation, that the creativity, that the original thought might emerge, and usually does. And before I know it, I've landed, and I feel like, wow, man, I just took a trip, man. <laughs> you know, I just sailed into the great unknown and I brought it back and here we are. That is what creativity is all about. That is the risk. That is the, be the willingness to fail and make a mistake that is crucial to the creative process. Have you ever done a trick that didn't work? Almost every single one. <laughs> in, in front of people? Like no, 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 if, no, that mean, failed, something that no, failed. The, well, front. the good news about doing magic is... And I think like rappers too, it's like you, you, you never know where the end is because it's up to him. So it's you, you can keep improvising and, and going. So there's never a, a failure unless you quit. So if you keep going, there's not a failure. You just keep changing and moving. I feel like my example and, and the thing that I try and inspire is to be yourself. Is again, the thing with Instagram and social media, it does become very contrived and controlled and I think the most important thing is, again, to post that thing of me falling over flat on my face because we all do it. It's, you know, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to fail. My whole thing, my biggest fear was failure. And it's ridiculous because, again, the imperfections of human are what makes us so great. We need to celebrate those things. What were you worried about failing? Life. Never been good enough. Actually, you know, trying to please, I'm a major people pleaser. Really? Oh, yeah. Now I've got a really special Jay Shetty bonus clip on how to redefine failure that I think you're really gonna enjoy. But before that, commitment of the day, I wanna know what are you committing to changing in your life or your business after watching this video? Leave it down in the comments below. When you write it down, that commitment is much more likely to happen. So let's see what you got. Thank you guys so much for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love, I'll see you soon and enjoy the bonus clip. In the middle of 2009, he was the software engineer that no one wanted to hire. He had 12 years of experience at Yahoo, but he was rejected by Facebook and then rejected by Twitter. He'd been to a great university. He had a great CV, but he decided to team up with one of his alumni members at Yahoo and started to create an app and focus on the startup space. In five years time, he sold that app for $19 billion to Facebook. Believe it or not, that was Brian Acton, the co-founder of WhatsApp. When he was rejected from Facebook, he said it was a great opportunity to connect with some fantastic people. I look forward to life's next adventure. When he was rejected by Twitter, he responded by saying, worked out, it was quite a long commute. It's so interesting to see that someone rejected from two of the top internet companies actually responded with humor and actually responded with positivity. This lady was diagnosed with clinical depression. Her marriage had failed and she was jobless with a dependent child. She was on a four hour delayed train journey from Manchester to London when she came up with this idea and she started to write this book about this wizard. And as she started writing, she then finished her manuscript, took it to 12 publishers and was rejected by all 12. Believe it or not, that's J.K. Rowling. This man watched his first company crumble. He was a Harvard University dropout and his first company's demo didn't even work. He went on to build Microsoft. His name's Bill Gates. Therefore, failure is just a sign that we need to widen our scope. We need to be ready and build ourselves up for the next level. Actually, what we end up achieving is far greater than what we'd envisioned for ourselves. And this divine plan, this orchestration can't be happening without this intervention. 
reason that occurs because if we had it our way, we'd just settle. We'd just accept what we thought was our goal, what we thought we were chasing. But actually, I've noticed that when you don't get that, later down the line, you look back and you reflect and realize that what you've gained is so much greater. Failures are only failures when we don't learn from them because when we learn from them, they become lessons and we actually extrapolate all of these teachings and actually get more insight into how we can improve the way we work and how we can actually drive with a different energy. The challenge we have is that we only talk about people's failures when they succeed and that's why they become this taboo or we feel like their failures never happened. We need to share these stories earlier. We need to bring out these stories and experiences on the journey so that people who are on the journey can actually follow in those footsteps. And that's why Steve Jobs said you can't connect the dots moving forward. You only can when you're looking backwards. Raise your standard. Apple at the core, its core value is that we believe that people with passion can change the world for the better. Not one drop of my self-worth depends on your acceptance of me. I don't ever give up. I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. Hey Believe Nation, if you want to see my all-time favorite top 10 rules of success, I have a very special secret video for you. These are the individual clips that I have personally learned the most from and applied to my life and my business. Check the link in the description for details.